The year was 1788, the United States was still a young nation, and it was ratifying its constitution. There were a lot of differences, but America's founding fathers agreed on one thing. Political parties were evil, they would tear the nation apart. Alexander Hamilton even called them a fatal disease. So they omitted political parties altogether from the Constitution. Now, there was common consensus, but one person thought it could be a mistake, it was Thomas Jefferson. And in 1791, he formed one of America's major parties. We will tell you which one later. But right now, America's political scene is very different. It has two main parties, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. They have shaped the country's political landscape for more than a century. Their histories are complex. Their ideologies are constantly changing, defined by America's political and social movements. So how did the two parties come about? And why does America have a two-party system in the first place? Let's go back to 1788. The Constitution was ratified. George Washington was the first president. Thomas Jefferson was the Secretary of State. Alexander Hamilton was the Treasury Secretary. Jefferson and Hamilton had competing visions for America. Soon, two political factions quickly emerged. There were the Federalists. Alexander Hamilton led them. The party wanted a strong central government, close ties with Britain, and the development of an industrial economy. Then, there were the Democratic Republicans, led by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, and what they believe in. They favored a limited federal government, favored the rights of the states, an agrarian-based economy, and stronger ties with France. This was the start of America's two-party system. So, the two were at loggerheads, the parties kept fighting, many worried they would break America apart. By the early 1800s, the Federalist Party collapsed. That left just the Democratic Republicans. They were the only party now. However, this dominance did not last long. By the 1820s, the Democratic Republicans began to fracture. The 1824 presidential election sealed the split. The Democratic Party that we know today was born. Leading it was Andrew Jackson. Jackson's platform was simple. Rights for the common man and a limited government. At that time, the party's base was largely in the South and the West. The supporters were farmers and settlers. The Democrats supported slavery. An issue that soon became a flashpoint in American politics. By the 1850s, the Democrats were staunchly defending slavery. But many in the North began to view it as a moral problem. So, in 1854, came the Republican Party a party of anti-slavery activists. They wanted to stop slavery, promote economic modernization, and foster development. In 1860, the party nominated Abraham Lincoln. He was running for president. At that time, he was relatively unknown. He promised to halt slavery, making it one of the most crucial elections in American history. Lincoln's election led to the secession of the Southern states. The Civil War broke out, we all know how that ended. The South lost, slavery was abolished, and the Republican Party solidified its position. They were the party of the Union, so the Republicans led the Reconstruction efforts. They helped rebuild the South. A faction in the party also pushed for protection. That's voting rights for African Americans. They got that done too. Believe it or not, the party was seen as radically progressive. So, what about the Democrats? They were associated with white supremacy. The Civil War really highlighted the divisions in the country. Republicans dominated the North and the West. Democrats controlled the South. By the late 19th century, things changed. It was the era of industrialization. The Republican Party chose its side quickly. It supported high tariffs. It wanted a gold standard. They wanted very little regulation, and that attracted the uber-rich, aka the businessmen and industrialists. As for the Democrats, they had to set themselves apart. The Civil War had weakened them. They needed a new voter base. 
So the party realigned itself as a populist force. It became the spokesperson for working class Americans, especially the farmers. They felt left behind the industrial economy. So Democrats raised their causes. It did not work at the ballot box, but it shaped what the Democratic cause was. Soon came a turning point. The Great Depression of the 1930s that the Democrats launched a series of economic reforms called the New Deal. It was under Franklin D. Roosevelt. Roosevelt advocated for a more active federal government, one that could regulate the economy, provide social safety nets, and expand the rights of workers. This pitch worked. Roosevelt became the 32nd American president. In fact, he was the only president to serve more than two terms. All this while, the Republicans were losing steam. Their voter base had shifted. The party attracted more rural and religious voters, voters who opposed federal control. The 1950s and 1960s brought about more change. There was the civil rights movement. Both parties once again realigned. Democrats embraced civil rights. It was under leaders like John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. Instead of belaboring those problems which divide us. On the other hand, the Republicans attracted the Southern whites, courtesy Richard Nixon's Southern Senator strategy. Kennedy predicts recession. Now, my friends, let's think of what's happening. So the voter base saw a dramatic shift. The once Democratic South turned Republican. The African Americans, who were once loyal Republicans, became a key voter base for the Democrats. And it has remained that way. In the 1980s, we had Ronald Reagan. He embraced a conservative agenda. Meanwhile, in the 1990s, Democrats moved to a more centrist position, especially under Bill Clinton. The differences between the two parties now are stark. We have the Republican Party which has embraced conservatism. It is populist, it's against immigration, and it wants to control women's bodies. Then we have the Democrats. They want to promote social justice, expand health care, embrace social welfare. But history shows how far the two parties have come. A party founded to abolish slavery is now a pro-business party, aka the Republicans. And the Democrats started out by catering to the Southern states, but now hardly wins there, from their origins to their modern configurations. Both the Democratic and the Republican parties have changed dramatically. Their story is that of America's. A nation constantly evolving, divided by ideologies, but hopefully united in its democratic foundation. First Post decodes the U.S. election, explains how America chooses its president, your primer on the race to the White House, everything you need to know about how America votes, and its global implications. U.S. election explained every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.